So what is the Earth effect? How does it affect space travel, particularly traveling to other planets or the moon? And how does it not defy the law of conservation of energy? Now, first of all, we just need to define the Earth effect and a couple of things about elliptical orbits. So simply put, the Earth effect is the effect where the greater the velocity of a spacecraft relative to the planet, the greater the increase in kinetic energy, hence total energy, for a given amount of fuel, for a given amount of delta V. Now, let's take an elliptical parking orbit. It's stable, and it has two very important points. A point which is furthest away from the Earth, and we call that the apogee, and the closest is the perigee. Now, in this stable orbit, the total kinetic energy and gravitational potential energy are constant. You add them up, and it's constant. Now, gravitational potential energy is based on the distance. The further you are from the center of the planet, the greater your gravitational potential energy. We're going to be a bit simple here. It's a little bit more complex than that. And kinetic energy, the faster that you are moving, the greater your kinetic energy. So, at apogee, you're really far away. That means a high gravitational potential energy, hence a low kinetic. When you're at perigee, when you're closest, you have a high kinetic energy, but a low gravitational potential energy. So let's see if we can illustrate this. Now, for an impulse burn, and what we mean by an impulse burn is it's the force of the burn is the only significant factor increasing or decreasing the kinetic energy. So for the same amount of fuel, you'll have the same change in momentum. You'll have the same delta V, no matter what your initial velocity is. And that's quite important. Now, let's take a very simple example. We've got something at perigee, which is moving at 20 meters per second. Now, when it moves out to its apogee, it's at 10 meters per second. And we're going to give an impulse burn at both places of 10 meters per second. So, at perigee, it increases from 20 to 30 meters per second, and at apogee, from 10 to 20. And this mass, this rocket, is very, very small. It's only 2 kilograms, and we'll explain why. Now, the kinetic energy is one-half mass times velocity. I've set the mass at 2 because a half times 2 is 1, so therefore it's very easy to calculate the velocity. The kinetic energy is just the velocity squared. Now, let's look at change in kinetic energy. So at perigee, goes from 20 to 30, so that ends up being 30 squared minus 20 squared, which is 500 joules. Look at at apogee. For the same delta V, we end up with only 300 joules. So at perigee, the impulse burn of the same delta V, the same amount of fuel, provides a far greater increase in kinetic energy, hence total energy. And that's the point. And it's that increase in total energy which converts into an increased apogee. Now, does this contradict or defy the law of conservation of energy? Am I getting something for nothing? And the answer is no, because it lies in the fact that the faster the spacecraft is going, the faster the fuel is going far greater kinetic energy. Now, due to conservation of momentum, the only way we're really going to increase the relative velocity of our spacecraft is because we have a relative decrease in the velocity of the fuel, or a certain amount of fuel. So any decrease in velocity of fuel for a given delta V, when it's moving fast, it will be a greater decrease in kinetic energy compared to apogee when it's moving much slower. So this means there's a far greater amount of energy that can be transferred to the ship. This means it doesn't defy conservation of energy. And it's used for Hohmann transfers and also for raising the apogee of a ship with a very small thrust-to-weight ratio. And it will do it multiple times at perigee.